Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Marjorie Orban? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the crime, then offer my analysis. Marjorie Ann Orban was born on October 29, 1961, in Miami, Florida. When she was young, her family moved to a town just north of Orlando. She took dancing lessons as a child and wanted to be a professional dancer. When she was 17, Marjorie was led to believe that she could not have children due to a medical condition. After hearing this devastating news, Marjorie made a commitment to living a reckless and self-centered lifestyle. In 1980, Marjorie graduated from high school. She worked at various restaurants and clubs over the next few years. In March 1981, Marjorie married for the first time. She divorced in October 1982. She married for the second time in June 1983 and divorced in October 1984. In the fall of 1985, Marjorie moved to Las Vegas with a boyfriend. She worked as a showgirl. When the romantic relationship ended, Marjorie attempted to return to Florida, but her vehicle broke down in Phoenix, Arizona. She decided to stay there and took a job as a clothing challenge dancer. It was in this capacity that she met a man named Jay Orban. He became obsessed with Marjorie and relentlessly pursued her. Eventually, she gave in and went out on a date with him. The date did not go well. Jay repeatedly took pictures of Marjorie and she found him to be creepy. Despite this, Marjorie continued to go out with him. Eventually, she moved into his residence, but was disappointed to find out his home was decorated with photographs of women without clothing. In addition, she was concerned because Jay was not wealthy. Marjorie decided to revive her original plan of moving back to Florida. She contacted an old friend named Michael Peter, who owned several clubs in Florida, she worked in one of his clubs near Pompano Beach and earned about $1,000 a night. The boyfriend, who Marjorie broke up with in Las Vegas, re-entered her life. They married in May 1986. This was Marjorie's third marriage. Not surprisingly, it ended quickly. The couple divorced in three months. Marjorie married again in October of that same year. This was her fourth marriage overall and her second marriage in 1986. They divorced in October 1988. Marjorie met a man who owned an excavating company in New Jersey. She moved to New Jersey and married for the fifth time. Not surprisingly, Marjorie found herself trapped in a loveless, hopeless, and desolate situation. Also, her marriage was not too good. After running into some problems with the IRS, Marjorie divorced her husband and moved back to Florida. She once again worked for Michael Peter. They became romantically involved, but Marjorie left Michael after he allegedly cheated on her. In April 1992, Marjorie married for the sixth time. Her husband was a Danish dancer. They divorced shortly afterward. Marjorie claimed that she was just trying to help him get his green card. Marjorie moved back to Las Vegas and resumed her career as a dancer. Her photograph even appeared on a billboard. Jay Orban, the man who had pursued her years earlier, saw the billboard when he was driving in Las Vegas on a sales trip. He contacted her, and they rekindled their romantic relationship. By this point, Jay owned a jewelry and Native American art business and was quite successful. Marjorie visited him in Phoenix and found that he was living in a nicer home than before. She was now convinced that Jay was wealthy, but she was still not interested. Jay asked Marjorie to marry him, but she declined his offer. Jay paid a visit to Marjorie in Las Vegas she told him that she really wanted a child. Jay informed her that if she married him, he would pay for fertility treatments. Marjorie agreed to marry Jay, but explained to him that if she was not pregnant within two years, she was going to leave him. Jay thought this was a fantastic deal. Marjorie was committing to stay with him for a period longer than her average marriage. Jay and Marjorie married in Las Vegas on July 22, 1995. Marjorie had managed to get married seven times by the age of 33. The happy couple lived in Phoenix, Arizona. Marjorie underwent 
fertility treatments, which were quite painful. Jay made every single appointment, and Marjorie was touched. She told him that even if she did not get pregnant, she would stay with him. As it turns out, Marjorie did get pregnant. On August 26, 1996, she had a son named Noah. Not long after this, the IRS problems that Marjorie had from her fifth marriage came back to haunt her. To protect Jay's assets, Marjorie and Jay divorced on January 2, 1998. They continued to live as if they were married and did not tell anybody about the divorce. Over the next few years, Jay gained a lot of weight. At his heaviest, he was over 270 pounds. He also spent a lot of time on the road. Marjorie was lonely and not happy. She told people that Jay did not satisfy her sexually and that he was just a paycheck to her. Marjorie had at least two affairs. One of these affairs was with a bodybuilder named Larry Weisberg. Marjorie told Larry that she was divorced from Jay and looking to move into a place of her own. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. On August 28, 2004, Jay Orban left Phoenix to start a sales trip to Florida. He returned to Phoenix on September 8, which was his 45th birthday. He talked to his mother on the phone in the morning. Jay went to the warehouse that he had for his business, made a few phone calls, and then stopped at a gas station a few miles from his house. This was at 4.35 p.m. After that, Jay Orban was never heard from again. Marjorie did not notify the police about Jay being missing until September 22. She told them that Jay had been missing for two days, which of course was not true. He had been missing for 14 days. Here is what the police found during their investigation. Marjorie was not eager to help the police to find Jay. She claimed that she was not convinced he was really missing and that she only contacted the police because Jay's parents were bothering her. After Jay's disappearance, Marjorie spent a lot of money. She took $45,000 from Jay's business account and went on a shopping spree. One item that she purchased was a piano that cost $10,000. The police obtained a warrant to search Marjorie's home and had the warrant served by a SWAT team. When they made entry into the house, officers ordered Marjorie and her boyfriend, Larry Weisberg, to get on the ground. Larry refused and was shot with a taser. He fell to the ground and was handcuffed. Larry started kicking at the officers and was given a second electrifying experience. This time, his head smashed on the floor. After being tased for a third time, he stopped resisting. In the house, the police found Jay's business checkbook and his credit cards, which were always with him when he traveled. No arrests were made, but the police were confident that Marjorie was involved in Jay's disappearance. On October 23, 2004, about two months after Jay went missing, a transient individual came across a blue plastic container on state trust land in North Phoenix. It was a vacant desert lot. He notified the authorities after opening the container and finding a human torso. The police determined that the torso belonged to Jay. His body had been frozen before being cut up with a saw. They identified his body after finding keys in his pocket. One of those keys matched an abandoned Ford Bronco that belonged to him. On November 13, Marjorie was charged in connection with using Jay's credit card at a Circuit City store. She was released as the police continued to build a murder case against her. On December 6, 2004, Marjorie was charged with murder. The police believed that she worked alone, the state offered Larry Weisberg immunity. This move was surprising considering that Marjorie and Larry were having an affair when Jay disappeared and Larry had refused to comply with the police during the search warrant execution. On January 29, 2009, Marjorie's trial started. The actual trial only lasted 71 days but took place over almost 10 months due to various delays. Marjorie Ann Orban was found guilty of first-degree murder two counts of theft over $100,000, and two counts of fraudulent schemes and artifices. She was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Now moving to my analysis. Marjorie Orban maintains her innocence. At her trial, her defense blamed Larry Weisberg. Marjorie claimed that Larry killed Jay during a confrontation in the garage and threatened to kill her son Noah to keep her silent. 
This brings me to the question, was Marjorie guilty of murder? Let's take a look at the evidence both for and against the idea that Marjorie was guilty, starting with the inculpatory factors. It took 14 days for Marjorie to report Jay missing. She claimed that she talked to Jay after September 8, but no one else was able to reach him. Marjorie went on a shopping spree after Jay disappeared. As part of this, she purchased a massive quantity of cleaning supplies and two large Rubbermaid containers. When searching Marjorie's house, the police found that photographs of Jay had been removed from frames and his clothes had been packed in boxes. The garage floor had recently been covered in epoxy, as if somebody was trying to conceal something. Marjorie and Jay divorced in 1998, which meant if they separated, she would receive nothing. She made a lot more money if Jay was dead. Marjorie had a long history of being manipulative, greedy, and exploiting men. She was actively having an affair when Jay was murdered. Marjorie admitted to knowing about the murder. She claimed that Larry was the killer, and he threatened her. This is inconsistent with her shopping spree, and Marjorie had many opportunities to contact the police. Moving to the exculpatory factors, it is technically possible that Larry Weisberg was the perpetrator, and Marjorie Orban had nothing to do with the murder. Marjorie's former lover, Michael Peter, said that he was willing to take Marjorie back at any point. All she had to do was call him. Marjorie did not need to kill Jay because she could obtain wealth with Michael. What motive did she have to commit murder? When considering all the evidence, do I believe that Marjorie Orban was guilty of murder? Yes, I believe she was guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. I don't know if Larry Weisberg was involved or not. The police believed that he had nothing to do with it. But either way, Marjorie was involved. What do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. When she was a teenager, Marjorie decided that she was going to live her life in a completely self-centered manner due to her belief that she could not have children. She launched a massive campaign of manipulating men for money. Working in clubs as a dancer gave her access to men with poor judgment. Marjorie realized that her physical attractiveness was the primary reason she was able to find men to exploit. She became obsessed with fitness. She exercised just about every day. Marjorie was sensation-seeking. She had many short-term, intense, and disastrous romantic relationships. She was only interested in the passionate phase of romance. When that was over, she became bored and moved on. Marjorie was looking for the ideal love. After living this fast-paced and hedonistic lifestyle for many years, Marjorie still felt as though something was missing from her life. She believed that having a child would satisfy her search for meaning and purpose, but she didn't have the money for fertility treatments. She married Jay Orban solely to achieve her goal of having a child. Jay had extremely poor judgment. He mostly dated women who worked in adults-only clubs and often supplied them with money. He thought that he could save them from a life of torment. After his first encounter with Marjorie, Jay became obsessed with her. When she rejected him for the first time and left, he tried to find her for years. Marjorie thought that Jay was disgusting and creepy, but she was impressed that he was obsessed with her. Marjorie stayed in a relationship with Jay for many years as she raised their son, but eventually that wasn't enough for her. Having a son was just another novelty. The effects were temporary, and Marjorie wanted more. When she found Larry Weisberg, it revived the passionate excitement from her younger years. Marjorie took this affair to remember and transformed it into an affair to dismember. She murdered Jay, put his body in a freezer, then dismembered him with a jigsaw. Marjorie had several narcissistic characteristics. She was self-centered, grandiose, had a sense of entitlement, lacked empathy, and was always searching for the ideal love. Marjorie was frequently deceptive. For example, she lied about her educational credentials, claiming to have advanced degrees. She told people that she had a pilot's license. And in prison, she told inmates that she was a journalist who was only there for a writing assignment. The good news for Marjorie is that she will have a lot of time to complete her literary masterpiece. Now moving to my final thoughts. Marjorie came to believe that her power over men could grant her anything that she wanted. As long as she was attractive, she was unstoppable. 
She lived her life in a shallow and empty environment where people were treated like objects. There was no personal connection. There was no sensitivity. There were only transactions. Marjorie's life was a series of deals, purchases, and acquisitions. She tolerated her lover until he no longer yielded a profit. Then she decided to return him for a refund. Those are my thoughts on the case of Marjorie Ann Orban. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.